All right, rapid fire roundup. It's been a really long time since I've done one of these, but there's been a lot of games that the Dice Tower team has played and reviewed that I wasn't a part of the review for, and I figured you guys might want my opinion on some of these games, because they might have slightly different tastes than other people, but most of the games I'm talking about here are pretty solid. I'm going to go from least to highest. I only have one game on here that I wouldn't have approved, so the rest of these games are going to be awesome. So I'm super stoked about that. Um, but let's get right into it. So the first one I want to talk about is Wormholes. This is kind of like a pickup and deliver game where the hook is the fact that you can put out your wormholes, but other people can also kind of like use your wormholes and things like that, but they have to pay you points as well, but you're trying to figure out how to get your wormholes so that way you can play these planet cards and get a bunch of points for them. It was an interesting game, but not a game that I would go back to time and time again. I do like space themed in games and the wormhole thing was kind of cool, but not something that I'm going to continue to play or, or seek out. Um, the next one here is Veiled Fate. This is a game where you each have different characters um, that you're trying to get points for, but no Nobody knows whose character is whose. So it's kind of like this secret game of like bluffing a little bit of like, oh, I'm going to put this character here. Is it because I actually want that character game points or is it just to like throw you off because there are places that they could put you that could mess you up if they knew who your character was exactly trying to pull you back down. It's a very interesting game and Ivy Studios does an amazing job with all their stuff. Great production values and things like that. Um, so I gave this one a seven. It was pretty fun. Um, the next one is Town Folks Tussle. I was actually in a um, game and talk for this one. Um, this is a crazy wacky game that has that like old timey cartoon feel, but very much like a boss battler where you have your characters and you're getting items and upgrading stuff and going up against bosses and things like that, like different terrain effects and things like that. It was a fun game. Um, not one that I feel like I would need to own. Um, I have this weird thing of like, I like I like games that have like strong, meaningful decisions. I'm not saying this game is terrible at that. It's just, it makes me just enjoy a game, not like love a game. Um, it was cool. It was cute, um, but not something, I mean, I approve it because it's a good game, but not something I need to own personally. Um, the next one here is Ready, Set, Bet. This is a horse racing game. Um, Tom loves this game. He's over the moon with it. Um, I enjoy it. Um, I do think uh, the whole betting aspect of it is a little bit mathy and trying to figure out exactly when to do it. The real time adds a lot of chaos to it. It is really cool to watch the horses racing up the track and just the mechanics behind, like, how the two dice make the horse move differently. And then if you roll the same horse multiple times in a row, different horses, depending on their odds, are going to move further getting doubles of the same number. Um, it's a really cool game. Um, the betting part, I probably do terrible at it most of the time. You have to get your thing out there really quick, but then just really hope, or you can wait a little bit later, but then the good spots are probably gonna be taken. And sometimes real time, it's like there's prop bets. It's hard to figure things out. Um, I enjoyed this game. It was fun, um, but yeah, ready, set, bet is crazy. Um, the next one here is Turing Machine. This is a straight up like deduction game with math. I enjoy this game mostly just because the mechanics and the stuff behind it, like how the game works, just thinking about all the math that goes into it to find those those boards with all the checkered, like making sure the check marks and the math works out for all that. It's just a cool game to have played. I don't think I need to own it. I don't think I need to play it a ton of times, but playing it once, I think most people should play it once just to see how it works and how cool the mechanics of the game are. Um, I enjoy deduction generally, but just basic math deduction is not that exciting to me overall, but I still really enjoy Turing Machine and I think it's something you should try out. Um, the next one here is My Father's Work. This is a worker placement game where you're kind of playing as like mad scientists trying to gather resources to do different crazy experiments. This is a game that's a Euro worker placement game that they have chocked full of story and theme. Some might actually say too much story because there's like paragraphs after paragraphs of stuff you read, but it's definitely interesting seeing how everything plays out and how everything kind of comes together as the game goes along. Um, it's it's a, quite a long game, actually, for this style of game. It feels like you're playing like a Lords of Waterdeep style game or something, worker placement um, with theme and stuff going on, but then it adds just more and more and more story. I enjoyed it, um, but it's not one that like makes it top of my list just because the length of the gameplay and I enjoy the narrative, but it's also still very much a Euro game. Um, the next one here is Feed the Kraken. I gave this one an eight. I love this game. This game was a lot of fun. It's a social reduction game where you're trying to steer the boat in different directions, whether you're a, a regular crewmate or like the Navy or whether you're a pirate or whether you're a cultist, you're trying to get yourself fed to the Kraken and wreck the ship. Um, 
it's definitely a very fun game and very interesting game and can add to, it's just one of those social deduction games that feels slightly different. It plays very quickly. Um, and as you're doing all the different stuff and choosing who's going out and choosing which directions you're gonna steer, it just makes for a very fun game. Um, I really enjoyed it and the components are really nice with the big like Kraken miniature and things like that. I, I enjoyed this one. This is a blast to play. This is one that I need to play even more. And I just enjoy social deduction games in general. So if you like social deduction games and haven't tried out Feed the Kraken, you definitely should give it a chance because it's a lot of fun. On the next one here is Massive Darkness. I give this one an 8.5. This one is a blast to play. Um, this is a dungeon crawl style game, but instead of just having all different fantasy characters, you do have that but each class has like a little mini game board that they're kind of like using to do stuff out on the board itself. Um, so it adds, normally I enjoy zombie side type, type stuff, but I don't find it too intriguing or too many meaningful choices as the game goes along. It seems like readily apparent what you should do all the time. Um, in, in Massive Darkness 2, I love the fact that you have all these knobs and things you're twisting and turning with each of the different factions and you play a different you play a different um a different class and then you're going to be doing different things i played the wizard in this one one of the games and it's just really fun to be like okay i gotta figure out how to manipulate all these spells and exhaust this and do this and do all that stuff i enjoy when games add that extra level of depth to it um especially when it's a thematic ameritrashy style game um where you're just going out there and slaying stuff it's like oh this lets me teleport and this lets me go over here and do like a massive fireball to this thing but then i get need the resources to do this resource management type stuff is a lot of fun for me. Um, so I really enjoyed Massive Darkness. So 8.5. Excellent. And then my number one game on here for today is Flamecraft. This is a basically a dragon placement game, but you have a single dragon. You're trying to figuring out where you're going to go um, and you're going to be getting resources. It's a really simple game where you're just trying to fulfill basically different contract type things out on the board. Um, and the cool thing is the village locations get more and more dragons on them and get kind of more and more leveled up as the game goes along. So you can get more and more things trying to figure out how to efficiently get points in the game. It's very much a Euro game, but it's extremely cute. I love the dragon theme. I love that there's all these cute dragons in the village doing different tasks and you can go and do all the different stuff. It's just really cute and really straightforward and a lot of fun. And a game that I really, quite frankly, want to play a lot more of just because it's got that like mass appeal to it. It's a great game. Um, So excellent for me, Flamecraft. I definitely enjoyed it. Anyway, that's the games I'm taking a look at this time on Rapid Fire Roundup. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave in the comments which one of these games you most enjoy or you're most excited about trying out yourself. And let me know um, how you guys are doing. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. I've been Roy Canning. I'll see you on the next one.